The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service presents Let's Talk Finance, a feature exploring the various elements of the economic program. Welcome again to Let's Talk Finance here on at Nationwide 90 FM. We had a very interesting discussion last term with the Acting Principal Director in the Fiscal Policy Management Unit at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, Trevor Anderson, uh, and he was talking to us about the genesis, what it is that spurred the country along this path of fiscal policy management and instituting fiscal rules and uh, the buy-in that both major political parties have contributed to the issue, given that in the past it was perhaps ad hoc how we went about the process of fiscal policy management. One administration coming in uh, pursuing a particular line, another administration coming in abandoning that line and uh, trying to plow a furrow by themselves. So Trevor, as we talk about present day and uh, the fiscal policy management paper published in February this year, there's one, an interim one to come in September. First of all, why February and September as the two publishing dates? What is, what's the significance of those two months? Okay, good morning, George, and good morning to your listeners. The publication of the fiscal policy paper in February and September is a requirement under the fiscal responsibility legislation. Mm -hmm. So the Minister of Finance is required under law to table the annual FPP in February for the annual budget, and in September, there is a, an interim which reviews the final outturn of the previous fiscal year. Yes. And it also provides a review of the first five or so months of the current fiscal year. Critically, it also provides the proposed expenditure ceilings for the upcoming fiscal year. Yes. And the timing of it is important because at the end of September, the budget call is issued by the Minister of Finance. And by budget call, it means sending around to the various, various ministries, ministries, departments, and, and agencies, and agencies. send your expenditure items exactly. for us to collate. Yes. Yes. And so um, everything is set out in, in what is called the budget calendar, yes. which is the responsibility of the public expenditure division at the ministry mm -hmm. and working in conjunction with the economic management division. You know, we, we sort out and finalize the dates and then issue these with cabinet's blessings, issue these dates to the various ministries. Yes. So as a part of the fiscal responsibility framework, two publications mm -hmm. the, for the fiscal policy paper. Yes. First in February, yes. and we do an interim assessment in September. Yes. All right. For the benefit of the listeners again, some of the headline items, things, and I, by headline I mean things that they would be familiar with by virtue of hearing it in the news mentioned or seeing it in the newspaper and newspaper reports and investigations even. Some of those headline items that are contained in the paper that you think Jamaicans would want to know the progress on? Outside of the general updates in terms of the, the macroeconomic indicators, yes. we provide what we call a global view of the government's fiscal stance. So the fiscal policy paper not only gives you information about the current fiscal year, mm -hmm. previous year or previous two-year um, performances, yes. we give you the forward-looking projections yes. for the succeeding three to five years. Yes. This is important, particularly for anyone who is thinking of investing in Jamaica, Yes. anyone who wants to gauge the potential actions of the government in the next three to five years. Yes. And this is, this, as I said, is important because it is critical for planning purposes, not, not even so much for private sector, but even within government. Yes for us to have a sense of what is the priority focus yes. of the government. And you can see that by comparing the global aggregates in the fiscal policy paper. But let's say you want to drill down behind the numbers. You, th you can then consult the estimates of expenditure. Mm -hmm. And the beginning fiscal year 1819, the government 
is now publishing forward estimates. Mm -hmm. So these estimates, these forward estimates, cascade down from the global targets mentioned in the fiscal policy paper. Mm -hmm. So yes, the public expenditure, the, the estimates of expenditure can be a little bit, um, you know, unwieldy. Yes. It's a very big book. Yes, it is. Um, but if you take the time to understand it and you can find the relevant pages that are of concern to you, a particular ministry, then you can drill down to see what exactly is the aim and intention mm -hmm. of the government mm -hmm. um, in any particular year, current, future. Yeah. When you say the global outlook is captured, do you also capture the outlook within CARICOM in terms of, because of course you often have comparisons between how the Jamaican economy is doing, the trajectory it's on in terms of its debt management process, uh, the, 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 how, how much revenue government is able to generate relative to how much revenue and the debt situation in TNT, in Barbados, down in the OECS. Do, does the fiscal policy paper capture that and make any links or make any points of, provide points of contrast or comparison or just a general trajectory of what that situation is, even as you look, of course, at the major economies, the United States, Europe, Africa, and down in South America? Um, no. Currently, the fiscal policy doesn't make explicit comparisons yeah. with our CARICOM partners. Yes. Um, what, what, what is done, particularly in the macroeconomic um, section of, of the document, we, we focus on our, our major trading partners, of yes. course, the U.S., yes. Is, is, is one. Um, and so um, developments in terms of international prices for our commodities, mm -hmm. which we export, and international prices for commodities that we import, yes. for example, oil prices, yes. these are all critical. And, and, and we provide an assessment as to the, the current position and the outlook on these prices and the potential impact on, on the economic growth mm -hmm. of the country. Not to say that um, we view or the impact from our CARICOM partners um, as, as, as not being yeah. important or negligible, yeah. Yeah. but there is so much that you can do. Yes. You don't want the document to become too unwieldy. Yes. You kind of want it to be, to, to be, it's really focused on presenting the government's fiscal stance. So at any point in time, you, when you pick up the document, you have a good sense of what Jamaica and the central government is about. Question, Trevor. Yes. If you take a, should I say, small island developing state, I should, because it, it, it is what it is. Jamaica. We are is. one, yes. If you take a small island developing state at random, which, like Jamaica, well, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be an island, but they usually are, the small cities. Yes. If you take one at random, would you find in that country, a fiscal policy management strategy and program like we have here? And would you necessarily, would you necessarily see that government using it as a part of the measures implemented, built into an economy to ensure that you're on a track for sustained growth? An excellent question, George. Ah, there you and go. And I'm happy to report that Jamaica is the leader, mm. and I'm happy to also say that a number of our CARICOM partners are embracing fiscal discipline. Mm -hmm. um, we can think of Grenada. Yes. Um, we can think of, of Antigua. A number of, 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 our Car of our CARICOM neighbors, Barbados, they're all coming around and, and appreciating the fact that if you want to have sustainability in your fiscal operations, yes. you really have to adopt fiscal rules. Mm -hmm. And these rules must be binding so that whatever administration forms, whichever party forms the government, mm -hmm. they have to abide by these general rules. Um, and what we are seeing in Jamaica is the benefits. We are seeing the benefits already. Mm -hmm. We are at record interest rates. Yes. We're at record unemployment. We're now in single digits. Um, record low unemployment. Record low. <laughs> well, yeah. maybe we're also approaching record employment. Well, well employment. There you go. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. the, the benefits are there to be seen. Mm -hmm. And 
what we have in Jamaica now is the phenomena of crowding in. Yes. The government is stepping back. We are not overbearing in terms of borrowing yes. domestically. Yes. Funds are there for private sector to drive the growth process at, yes. at record low rates. Yes, there is room for the banking system to you know, offer more competitive products, but we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Alongside the, f the, 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 the fiscal rules and uh, to go along with the environment that, it is, that they are intended to create, what is the, or what are the other major things that need to happen to close the loop on having the ideal conditions, not perfect, the ideal conditions for sustained economic growth? Because, and I say that, Trevor, because that's why we're doing this. Yes. We want sustained economic growth. So what else needs to happen? You have this now in place. It's been in place for several years. You're getting vital areas of the economy moving in the right direction. You just spoke about inflation and unemployment and all of that. What is the other big thing that needs to happen to cement this and take us along in the ferry? On the side of the central government, obviously we, we are moving in terms of upgrading the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. All these road works you see taking place, it's meant to improve the travel times of the public. Yes. On the private sector side, we would want to see a more aggressive investment appetite. Yes. What we want to, to see is a, a move away from seeking to park your funds in government instruments mm -hmm. and start taking risks. Mm -hmm. um, not to be reckless, yes. but start you know, searching for bank labor projects. Um, so it's a, it's a partnership between government and private sector. Yes. No one side alone has, has the answer. We have to work together. Yes. And so um, what's left really now is, is the improvement in productivity. Yes. We, we're seeing the improvements in terms of the, the general, how the macro indicators are lining up. Yes. I can't recall another time in Jamaica's history, apart from the early 60s, yes. when the macro indicators were lining up so beautifully. Yes. The question now is, how do we push, how do we increase and sustain growth? Yes. Agriculture is critical. Yes. We have to look at smart agriculture. And as I mentioned, smart agriculture, there was a program I saw recently where in the, I think it's the, the Andean Mountains in Chile, mm -hmm. In recognition of climate change and the higher temperatures, what the farmers did, they dug six feet below mm -hmm. the surface. Yes. Had a translucent covering, yes. which would allow in a certain amount of sunlight mm -hmm. for the crops, mm -hmm. but the amount of sunlight coming in wouldn't be strong enough to burn the leaves. Yes. And they channeled water from whatever source mm -hmm. down into those subterranean farms. Yes. I have to ask you, perhaps cheekily, those from the old school, Trevor, will say, will look at a, a list outlining the annual growth numbers for Jamaica since, say, 1962. I have one of those lists. And they'll say, but look at these, 7%, 9%, 11% one year, there was a golden period, golden period of growth. Yeah. And we had no fiscal rules. So all of this is nonsense because the economy has proven that it can deliver significant growth. And by significant, we're talking the China levels, which is 7%, and yes. sometimes the Chinese get 7%, and you hear that it is disappointing. But anyway, the 7 and 9% and 5% that we yearn for that have not been seen in Jamaica for years, yes. people will say that those were achieved in a time gone by when there was no need for any fiscal rules and perhaps handcuffing ourselves in the way that we are now. You say what to them? All right. The period of the 60s, those periods, um, what we had were very strong prices for our primary commodities. We, we had guaranteed prices for sugar, banana, other export crops. Yes. We had a sector, the, the bauxite sector, mm -hmm. which was coming into its own from, from the 50s. Yes. And so the, the strong demand for aluminum... Yes the relatively high price, those higher prices for our primary commodities served to disguise yes. and perhaps 
some would say, well, there was no need for fiscal rules back then yes. because the revenues, the yes. incomes, yes. more than satisfied the needs of the country. We're out of time, but yes. briefly, you're just saying that times changed. Times have changed. Yeah. No more guarantees for all our primary commodities. Yes. The bauxite sector has matured. Yes. There's no more big bang to get from these. Yes. So we now have to look to other areas yes. outside of tourism, outside of agriculture. And agriculture. Yeah. To, Especially to, the way we used to. Yes, and one well. of them is manufacturing. Excellent, excellent. Trevor, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure having you. And uh, all the best as you continue to serve. Thank you. Acting uh, Principal Director in the Fiscal Policy Management Unit at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, Trevor Anderson. That's it for Let's Talk Finance. That was Let's Talk Finance, brought to you by the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. 